Hello friends! As this is third part video about fractals uh, and its role in architecture of our previous civilization, human civilization, our civilization before invasion. As you can see on the video, fractals are everywhere. All architecture has signs of fractals. All architecture had fractal design as we already discussed and shown in previous video. Just to remind, I'm showing you a few more examples of fractal, uh, fractals and fractal architecture. In different parts of the world, they all have the same features. They all built and designed using fractal structures. And why I think so? I already explained in first part of the video, in second and will explain in this one. And all these buildings has one in common their fractal design. They have fractal design and purpose of free energy using fractals and directing energies and vibrations uh, using fractal design, fractal shapes. And uh, just to remind you uh, what was in the first parts of the video, uh, this is my channel in Russian, Celnazor, and we were discussing uh, features of fractal. Uh, features like you know uh, compilation and repetition in all levels upside down in the first video we discussed uh, that uh, the whole earth is a crystal no matter what shape it is but it has crystal features and all um, main cities were in certain parts on certain distances in uh, triangles uh, sometimes on straight lines and we can see those triangles and we can calculate the places of power, places of uh, main uh, deposits, uh, oil deposits and uh, raw material deposits and so on. And we found that all cities, main cities of previous civilization had fractal design and uh, we discussed about Malta, uh, Malta star forts which are multi-level everywhere on all levels from top to down. And also, we discussed uh, different fractal design in rose windows and inside some of the buildings, like you know, big uh, uh, cathedrals. Let's call it Catholic cath cathedrals, but it was, so it was not originally designed for praying. If somebody believes that uh, such a huge building, beautiful building uh, with very tall towers, we were created just to put cross fractal antenna on top to make God see it better or to make uh, bells sound better or uh, organs, pipe organs were only for music. Okay, let them believe it. But I, I have other opinion and if you uh, can turn your brain on, you're welcome on my channel. And we also discussed uh, different fractal shapes, uh, for example, uh, on top of columns, capital so-called and uh, different types of fractal design on uh, outside decoration of buildings and inside uh, decoration of buildings. And if you haven't seen some of my other videos about magnetron shapes uh, and, and so on, and about the uh, role of sound in making uh, energies and so on, you're welcome, because you will understand better what I'm talking about and what I'm trying to tell you. So, uh, outside we see definitely uh, also fractals, uh, because look at the top of the dome, it's very obvious for me, and it's also obvious that inside it has also fractal design in uh, layering in the uh, shape of this dome inside. Why I think so? Let this guy answer. You're watching a mythology video, and that probably means you know that nature is crawling with Fibonacci numbers. So they're in flower heads, in pineapples, in pine cones like that. But have you ever heard a really nice, accessible explanation for why they're there? Well, for the past three weeks, I've been trying to come up with an explanation like this that really gets to the mathematical core that makes this happen. And I think I found it. So let me know how I went with this at the end of this video. There's quite a bit more nice maths to all this that I'm going to talk about in this video. In particular, there's a nice connection with the golden ratio. For that, check out part two. 
So I'll focus on flower heads like this and let's just have a close look. What jumps out at you are of course the spirals. So there's 55 going this way and 34 going the other way and there's 21 if you focus in on the middle and even further in there's 13. And of course Fibonacci numbers. Right? Now before we move on I just want to emphasize that these different numbers are visible in different parts of the flower head. So the smaller the further in. So 13 is visible here, 21 further out, but there's always this region where they overlap. So consecutive numbers, when you see them in the plant, are occupying different regions, but they're always overlapping here with the next two, uh, 21 and 34. Okay, now plants like this grow, so does the Fibonacci sequence. Starting with the two seeds, one and one, we grow them like this. One plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, 3 plus 5 is 8, and so on. Now the plants that exhibit these spirals all have something in common. They all grow from a central point. So there's more and more of these buds being pushed here in the middle, and as they appear in the middle, they push everything out to the boundary, and that gives this really nice homogeneous flower head in this case. So a bit of a more detailed look. So here I've got the first guy sitting, just sitting there waiting for the second one. The second one squeezes in like that. And then the third one has to kind of squeeze in above or below. There's a bit of asymmetry, so it goes for the top here. And then, well, there's this gap here. That's where the next one's going to squeeze in. There's a gap there where the next one's going to squeeze in. You can also see these seeds or buds are growing as they're being pushed out. So all this together establishes a very nice pattern, very, very quickly, very robust. And what that leads to is basically every seed or bud playing the same role inside the flower head. So some consequences of all this, when you have the plant growing, all the buds are being pushed out radially, so they actually move along pretty much straight lines. Another thing is if you focus in on part of the flower head and take snapshots, you basically always see the same thing. You can kind of turn around like this, you always see the same thing. Then when you have a close look again, you see that everything here is packed very, very densely. Okay? So things are being squeezed into the middle and everything is kind of pushed out and you're really packing things as densely as you can. Now, if this was absolutely optimal, the densest packing of circle-like things like these, these buds uh, would really be this pattern here. You don't quite get there, but you get fairly close. So you've got these layers here and they're interleaving like this. And then you also get these circles aligning in certain ways and you've got another one going the other way. Now let's see where this sort of packing comes up in a real plant. There it is. You can pretty much take any part of the plant, you'll be able to fit this pattern in there. Uh, closer look here. Now we are two families. There's the first one. That's a family of spirals now equally spaced going around the center of the flower head. And there's a second one going the other way comes about very naturally just from this little stable pattern being established in the center of the flower and then everything kind of being packed as closely as you can. Um, you get these two families of spirals happening. Now if we focus in on this plant we can actually see another family of spirals. There it is. It doesn't jump out at you like the other two but it's there and actually it does jump out if you extend them out further into this part of the plant up there. Let's have a close look. So the first two families of spirals, they make these diamond cells. And the third type of spiral, they form diagonals cutting through those diamonds. So I call them the diagonal spirals, okay? And these three spirals being connected like this actually translate into the mathematical core that makes the Fibonacci numbers appear in flower heads like this. So what is it? Well, if you have a family of spirals twirling this way, equally spaced like that, and another one twirling that way, equally spaced, and you look at the diagonal family like this, and you count the number of spirals in these families, you always find that the number of green ones plus the number of red ones is exactly equal to the number of blue ones. And you can already see the connection, right? So there's two numbers, and they're being added up to give a third number, just like the way the Fibonacci sequence grows. I'm actually going to prove this to you at the end of this video. It's my own proof, very proud of it, so I have to do it. But let's just run with this. 
So we've got one number visible, that's the greens, and we've got another number visible, that's the reds. We don't have the blue ones yet. So how does the blue one come up as the next number in the sequence, visually? Well, let's have a look here. I'll highlight one of the green spirals, I'll highlight one of the red spirals, and I'll also draw in one of the blue ones there. It's not jumping out at you yet. Focus in on this point, magnify it out over here. Now, the spirals correspond to the shortest connections. I mean, the spirals are not there, you're just making them up, basically. And what you do is you're looking for neighboring buds and then extrapolate these connections that you see here. And the neighboring buds here are indicated by the green and the red at the moment. So what happens when now everything gets pushed out further? So let's just go. So you can see, I mean, we've got the same arrangement all the way throughout, but everything kind of gets spread along larger and larger rings here. And what you can also see is that the length ratios change. In fact, this one has now become the longest connection and the other one are shorter. And when I take away the highlighting here and you close your eyes for a second and open them up again, you can actually no longer see the green. But what you can see now very clearly is the blue and the red. So that's how it goes. And well, we see the next type of spiral appearing there in the middle and it will become dominant further out as we push things further out. Okay, so we've had like four different kind of spirals here already. So we kind of start with those two. We know that the numbers here add up to the third number. These two are visible. This one becomes visible next. These two numbers add up to that one here. They are visible at the moment. That one's going to be visible next and so on. So starting with two seed numbers here, we get a Fibonacci-like sequence happening from that point onwards. Okay, so that's definitely part of the explanation. What it doesn't quite explain yet is, well, why do we start with Fibonacci seeds like 1 and 1 and 1 and 2 or 2 and 3 or 3 and 5 and not some other numbers? Okay, could be some other numbers that pop up here first and once they are established, everything else is determined by our rule. Well, there's a bit of confession that I have to make. I mean, it's often claimed that the only numbers that come up in these plants are Fibonacci numbers, but that's actually not true at all. There's actually a lot of different sequences that come up. So there are the Fibonacci numbers here, but there are also like double the Fibonacci numbers, for example. And there are also these guys here, they're called Lucas numbers. So all these come up quite, quite a bit, but what they all have in common is that they follow our rule. So two numbers always add up to the next one in the sequence. Okay, well there's still a bit of a predominance of the Fibonacci sequence and how do you explain that? Well, you really have to have a close look at the individual plant and you have to do a very detailed analysis there and well, I'll link in a couple of papers in the description. It's a lot more complicated. It goes beyond what I'm going to explain here. I can just give you one more bit of insight into why you know, these sorts of sequences should come up and nothing else. If you just think about it, a plant really also starts from very small numbers, right? It starts from one, one, two, three, and so on. And since this pattern that I've been talking about is established very quickly, you'll also very quickly see like a ring in which two of these families are apparent. It's going to be small numbers of spirals in, in these families of spirals, right? And so it's going to be either two and three, or three or five, or six and ten, four and six, one of those guys and it's going to take off from there. So, you know, it's quite plausible. All right, so I'm quite happy with this explanation, so tell me whether you're happy too. Apart from that, I still want to give you my proof for why green plus red is equal to blue. So we start out with these two families of equally spaced spirals, and I've actually just made this up in a, in a drawing program, and another one that kind of twirls the other way. We overlap them, like that, and we draw in the family of diagonal spirals. Now I claim that whenever we do something like this, doesn't matter how this comes about, we always get green plus red is equal to blue. Okay, so here's my proof. So we circumnavigate this ring and we start at this corner and first we follow one of the red spirals until we can't go any further. Then we switch to one of the green spirals, follow that one for a while, then we switch to a red one again and then to a green one red one, green one, it doesn't really matter how you do it exactly, it doesn't matter, as long as you make a closed path like this, yellow path, okay? Now, the points of intersection here on the yellow path, we highlight. So first, make those all green, so green from this corner on up to there, then in this corner here, we put red, and we go up to here with red, and then again switch to green, and then keep on going like this all the way around. 
All right. And now you can actually see at a glance that green plus red is equal to blue. Here we go. Every red point is exactly one red spiral. That means there's exactly as many red spirals as there are red points. And the same way, there's exactly as many green points as there are green spirals. On the other hand, there's exactly as many points as there are blue spirals. And that shows, <laughs> at a glance, that green plus red is blue. Isn't that nice? And that's it for this video. Um, so eventually we'll also make uh, part two, so watch out for this one. That's going to be then highlighting the connection with um, the golden ratio. And as this guy explained, uh, this uh, also, this pineal gland in our brain and this uh, pine cones in this uh, fractal shape on top, this pine cone which we see in Vatican, pine cones we see in Asian temples, pine cone, cone uh, we see uh, everywhere all the world, uh, this Grebennikov um, shape uh, also has fractal design, like in our brain, this pineal gland, this also has this shape, I think, because of, for higher reason, for higher person, and also fractal shape just like pineal gland, like uh, pine cones everywhere on cannons, uh, on buildings, and in these niches inside buildings, it has the same reason and the same person to direct energy using fractal shape and direct it and create it, multiply to make resonance and so on uh, using its shape and being in resonance with universe uh, because all fractals are in resonance as uh, though these fractals which i show you in so-called mosques it's also not for praying it's also not uh, churches for muslims they have the same purpose make energy and direct energy and connect and so on because it resonates with our uh, nerve system with our blood system, which are, has also fractal design and pineal gland. Please uh, make research what for this gland is, and it's uh, in charge for everything, for inspiration, for energies, and so on, for connection of the world, extra sense, extra power, and so on. And you will understand that all is connected, all design, all over the world is about the same just for the same purpose in india as you see it's a, a sailings in india it's in asia in uh, persia i mean in iran in saudi arabia everywhere in uh, barabudur indonesia in russia in europe they all had domes all architecture had domes as horn, horn antenna and has fractal design inside and outside, as, as I shown you in temple on the center of Red Square in Russia, and so-called cathedral on Malta and everywhere, like sailings and domes in uh, actually everywhere: Saint Petersburg, India, Bangladesh, uh, Australia, and so on. Just enjoy the beauty of fractal design all over the world. I just. Uh, randomly, you know, uh, searched for sailings, dome, church, and uh, golden ratio in architecture. And you don't need to believe me, just search for yourself, uh, Google or Yandex or any other search engine. Just type sacral geometry, domes, uh, sailings, uh, ancient geometry, ancient architecture, and you will see those pictures. It's everywhere. The same. Thousands of them has the same rule, the same law of universe, fractality. Fractality is the way. It's not it's the path. It's not the purpose. Uh, it's not the final goal. As you see, Everywhere we can see rotation and fractal designs, symbols of rotation, meanders, and sun, and fractal design. You cannot find anything square, rectangular, 
you will see round corners everywhere because circle uh, and especially yellow circles is kind of our god and it has some purpose like this one it's uh, also horn antenna with fractal design nothing is by um, incident uh, all just for decoration everything all beauty has some technical pur purpose for transmit energy like antenna radiate and accept energies to emit energies resonate with sound and energies and and so on guys it's technical device macro chips we lived in beautiful macro chips now we deal with micro chips but it's our enemy directing us to run away against uh, laws of harmony laws of our universe to violate all laws before invasion we had beauty everywhere and we lived inside huge macro scheme where all how to say it, let's call it streets were waveguides and waveguides were a way to send energies without wires and aqueducts so-called aqueducts were for to transmit energy not for uh, supplying water it's obvious for me now and this is it's most underground guys it's underground it's not on surface it was under also it was uh, built before mud flood i will make a few videos about um, different metro stations uh, underground subwave uh, the tube in different countries different names but the main idea underground railways everywhere are first underground were built before mud flood before invasion and i can prove it so let's summarize let's sum up uh, briefly uh, all i can tell you the whole universe has fractal design inside it on some level uh, it's like hologram and has structure of crystal crystallic structure where everything connected with everything actually uh, directly or indirectly and law of karma uh, is based on this uh, principle this rule second as tesla said if you want to understand the universe uh, think in terms of uh, energy vibration and frequencies so everything is vibrating rotating and has frequencies the higher frequencies the closer you to the creator uh, let's call it god uh, third frequency and vibrations uh, follow the rules of mathematics and fractality and can be uh, measured and calculated and redirected using uh, those shapes fractal shapes fractal rules uh, number four uh, nature like technologies uh, of creating energy and living in harmony with universe uh, uh, receiving free energy eternal flow of energy uh, means uh, f following uh, can be reached by following uh, laws of uh, fractal and law of uh, universe of our universe uh, and the shapes can help us to get free energy with uh, right vibrations and frequencies number five all architecture in our world before mud flood were built using this uh, sacral geometry uh, sacral shapes uh, and a special shapes and forms to direct energy like uh, you know uh, different salients in uh, iran and so on they were using cavity structures like grebennikov using crystals also they were covered some mirrors and fra and crystals to improve and to make better energy flow with vibration so all architecture was kind of microchips uh, using uh, techno magic uh, and so on it was our normal life technasma techno magic and so on using uh, number five uh, golden ratio and so on so we all live in this beautiful world of free energy and magic on a special where all churches were built on a special places not like now i'm showing you we are in faraday cell faraday cage 
uh, in modern building where this uh, concrete and um, steel structures inside walls are like you know cage for us like a prison it's an energetical and uh, vibrational prison for us that's the only thing i can tell so our enemies uh, make us go against our universe absolutely not like we lived before because before we lived in in a beauty like you see i'll just show you some photos to show the harmony we had before and these fractal ornaments ornamentation and decoration we had everywhere in patterns uh, so-called uh, national patterns or how to say in english ethnic music or like indian celt music and so on because our enemy is destroying our ancient generators because uh, it gives us power it connects us with the universe because uh, fractal structure is connected to the whole universe and when we are inside such buildings uh, we get power we get argon energy fear we are have uh, we are full of energy actually and uh, enemy knows about it and he destroys buildings like this and he tells uh, actually the truth because of magic law enemy must tell us what he's gonna do and tell us the truth but he's telling true calling it science fiction he's telling true in avatar in starship troopers like this and in some other movies like independence day e and ender's game and he's cheating us doing this he calls it science fiction think about it thank you